This is the job screen in element time. So we're under jobs and we're under active jobs. These will show me all the jobs that are currently available for time tracking for my crews. You're gonna set up jobs so that your crews can clock not only their time for payroll, but also what they're doing for your job costing and analysis. So jobs could be a customer like Anderson Residence Front Lawn or Acme Company Grounds Maintenance. Jobs could also be an internal job. You could create a job called shop or office and use, for example, a shop job to track loading and unloading time in the morning, or you could track equipment maintenance time, you, know, you could track just general shop maintenance around the yard. So jobs are any task that you want your employees to track time against, so you can analyze it at the end of the year, end of the month, whatever, to see how things are going. Here's my list of jobs, and there's a whole bunch of tools on the screen that'll help you make use of this list. Number one, you can sort your list of jobs by clicking the column headers. So if I wanted to sort by job name, I'll click this. If I wanted to go from Z to A, so backwards to forwards, I'll just click it again. It'll flip it upside down. I could also sort by address or by customer name, just doing the same thing. Now, if you have a long list of jobs, you may have uh, your jobs spread out across a number of pages. So up here in the top right, it'll show you one of one. If I had a lot of jobs, it might say one of four. And that would indicate that I have four pages worth of job information. Just click right to go one, two, three, four, or click left to go four, three, two, one in the pages. I can also search for jobs. So if I wanted to find all my jobs with Acme in the name, I can just search for Acme. This will return all my jobs with Acme in either the job name, the customer name. I can also search by address or job ID. There's another handy use for job searching though. It will also search across task names or activities. So for example, if I wanted to find all my jobs with pruning, I could do a search for pruning. And that'll go find not just the jobs with the, the word pruning in the name or address, but the word pruning in work areas or activities. So I can now find these are all the jobs that have some reference to pruning in the name of the task that I've created for them. To clear your job filter, the search filter will show up over here on the right. To clear it, just click the red X. It'll wipe it out and return you back to your master list. Now you can also create groups for jobs, and we'll get into that later in the job group screen help. But here I can also show just a list of jobs that belong to a certain group. So for example, if I just wanted to show my snow jobs, I'll come down here and pick snow jobs, and then it'll bring back just the jobs that belong to the group that I created called snow jobs. When you want to see everything again, just go back to show all groups. Over here on the left, you've also got active and inactive jobs. Active jobs are the jobs that are going to show up on your crew's phones. They're available live right now for time tracking. Inactive jobs are jobs that you've sold and maybe not started yet, or they're jobs that you've completed and you don't want to show up on the crew's phones anymore. We'll show you in a couple of minutes how to turn a job on and off from active and inactive. Let's first look at how to open a job. So to open a job to review it, just simply click the name of the job. Now it's open. On the left-hand side, I can look at information about the job or the list of tasks, or I could look at the review screen to see how we're doing on the job's progress. Click back here or back at the bottom to return back to your master menu. I can also create a new job from here. And there's a couple of ways you can create a new job. Down in the bottom right, the button says new job and it has a plus sign. We're gonna click that. First, pick your job type. Now you can create more of your own job types in the settings. For now, I've got install, service, snow, internal, which would be a, a job that doesn't have a customer. It's an internal company job. And I've also got prevailing wage. So for instance, if I wanted to make the green residence backyard, I might click install. Job name might be green backyard. Address would be 103 Maple Drive. Customer name might be green, Eva and Jeff and then whether I want to track time against work areas or services. Click OK, and then I'll create a new job for you. All the information I plugged in in the first screen is gonna show up on here. It's gonna use this address to automatically calculate the latitude and longitude. That'll help us during time tracking. It'll allow us to see how far away the crews were from a site when they clocked in. And I can also set up things like street map, site map, other links. More on that in the help button down here.
Now you can also create a job from an LMN estimate. So if you're using LMN for estimating, go over here to the import button that has the plus sign behind it. You can search for the name of the job you're trying to import, or you can just click the search button to return all. Just make sure if you're looking for a construction estimate, you're under standard, or if you're looking for a service under estimate, you're gonna search under service. Once you find the job that you wanna import, you click the import button. It's gonna go out and find all the work areas that I created for that job. So these are all the work areas that were in the estimate. And if it looks good, I can hit import now. If the customer didn't approve one of the work areas, for instance, if this customer didn't approve the pergola, I can also untick that so that won't get imported. And I'll click the import now button and it's created a job for me. So I've got the job information. I've also got tasks along with the estimated hours from the estimate. It's all ready to go for time tracking. Go back to go back to your job list. So that's how to create a job from scratch. So if you didn't do an element estimate for a job, you simply go new job and quickly create it from scratch. Only takes about 60 seconds. Or you could also import an element estimate for a job by clicking the import button. Now let's look at a couple other handy tools that are time savers. Number one is the reassign button. A reassign button is useful for two things. One, to assign jobs to groups, or two, to change the job types. So for example, if I created a, a job for installation type, but it really was a maintenance type, I could click this, say reassign, go to job types, change it to service, click OK. That's going to change that job to be a service type or construction type or anything I wanted to change it to. I can also reassign jobs to groups. So for example, if I wanted to assign jobs to my snow group, I could do a search for snow, select these jobs, say reassign to job groups, and I'm gonna add them to my snow jobs. Click okay, and they're added to my snow jobs list. The active and inactive button makes jobs active or inactive. So for example, if we were done the Anderson landscape and I didn't want it to show up for time tracking anymore, I'll click it, I'll go down here and I'll say make inactive. Now the Anderson landscape job is not gonna show up on this list and it's not gonna show up on the crew's phones when they go to clock into a job, it's inactive. Now if Anderson landscape came back, for example, a couple of weeks later and had some warranty work, I can always tick this, say make active and it's now back in my active jobs. All the jobs that are in the active list show up in your cruise timesheets. All the ones on the inactive list don't. It's a really good idea to at least monthly go through this list and allocate things appropriately. That way the crews in the field aren't looking at a whole bunch of jobs that are over or past. You'll find it a lot quicker, a lot more efficient, a lot more mistake free if you keep this list nice and tidy. So update this list at least once a month. You can also do things like add tasks for a job. So for example, if I wanted to add a task called relocation to a bunch of snow jobs, I could type in snow, I could tick off all these jobs, and I could say add a task. And let's call this job, or this task, relocate snow piles. So this task is gonna get added to each and every one of the job I selected. So I'll click it's a snow and ice cost code, and here I can determine whether I, the time is billable by the hour or not. A number of estimated hours, etc. Chances are your estimated hours won't be that useful on the screen because in real life estimated hours are going to vary depending on which job site it's on. But this will allow me to very quickly add a task to a whole bunch of selected jobs at once. It's most useful if you've decided you've made a mistake. So if you created a whole bunch of jobs and realized eh, I should have done it this way, you can always use that add task button to select a bunch of jobs, hit add tasks, and add a task for time tracking to all those selected jobs at once instead of going through and adding that same task one at a time. I can do the exact same thing for rates as well. If I wanted to flag each one of these jobs as also having a billable rate for a skid steer at 100 bucks an hour, for instance, I could hit add rates and I'll go down to my snow for my skid steer and pusher and tick that off. And again, it gives me a price and I could say 100 bucks an hour and I could click OK. And that would create that rate for each one of those jobs. Now, if that rate's gonna differ for each job, I can still create it, add it, and then I'd have to go back into each individual job and edit the price manually, because the price may change on each individual job. But again, a fast way of adding that rate to all the jobs, now all I gotta do is tweak pricing wherever it's necessary. I can also add activities. 
So if I wanted to also add an activity to all these jobs, maybe I'm going to bill uh, $40 a bag for salt on the walkways, for instance, and I wanted that on each and every one of these jobs. Make sure they're all ticked off, go to add activities. I'll say salting for bags. It's already set at $40 a bag. Again, I could change that if I wanted to, but click OK. That's going to add that as a billable activity to every single one of those jobs that was selected here. Just a fast way of adding things to a batch of jobs instead of going through one at a time. The help button you're looking at. We're watching the help video right now, so it's gonna launch this video. And then the import and the new job button, we already covered uh, a couple of minutes ago when we looked at how to create a job. So these are all the tasks available under the jobs menu.